So I want to review over atoms and ions with you um, from some notes you took um, already. So if you would, please get your notes out and go back to the Roman numeral three. So atoms are electrically neutral. So the reason they're electrically neutral is because the number of protons equals the number of electrons. Now remember, the protons are found in your nucleus and the electrons are found in the electron cloud. You should always assume that you are dealing with an atom unless you're specifically told it is an ion and that it does have a charge. The protons are like the fingerprint of the atom. No two elements have the same number of protons. Protons uniquely determine the element. And so hydrogen, for example, will always have one proton, and that will never change. That's what defines hydrogen. Helium always has two protons. No other atom has two protons except for helium. The electrons are in the atom specifically for bonding purposes. But protons have a positive charge, and the electrons have a negative charge. So in an atom, the number of protons equal the electrons, so the positives and the negatives cancel each other out. We will also need to understand what an ion is. An ion is defined as an atom or group of atoms that have either a positive or a negative charge. An ion will form when an atom either gains or loses their valence electrons. Now, we define our valence electrons as the electrons found in the outermost energy level of an atom. They're the ones on the outside, and they're the only ones that can be gained, lost, or shared. So when an atom gains or loses its electrons, that's when it forms an ion. There are two types of ions. Cations are ions that have a positive charge. These form when an atom loses electrons. Now this is a little counterintuitive because normally when we lose something, it's not a good thing. But in this case, when atoms lose electrons, they become positive. And so you think of positive things as being good things. You have to remember that electrons have a negative charge. So it's kind of like if you think of electrons as being a bad habit. If you lose bad habits, that's a good thing. You become a better person. So when an atom loses its electrons or its negatives, it becomes more positive because it then has more protons than it does electrons. Only your metals form cations. I've always remembered that cations are the ones with positive charges because the T in the word cation looks like a plus sign. Anions are the ions that have a negative charge. Anions form when an atom gains electrons. So remember, electrons are like bad habits, and if you gain bad habits, you become more negative, or it's not a good thing. So if you gain electrons, you become more negative, like an anion. It's our nonmetals that form anions. The way I remember anions are negative is if you look at the word anion and break it up, you can look at the A and the N for negative, and it ends in the word ion, so a negative ion. Now, if everyone would have out their periodic table, make sure you have that out so you can refer to it as we look at this next section. When we're using our periodic table, you will notice that your element symbol is always shown, and then you have an atomic number, and you have an average atomic mass also. So we're going to talk about what they mean. The atomic number is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. The atomic number is always represented with a capital Z comes from a Latin abbreviation. Again, remember the proton uniquely identifies the element, so the atomic number uniquely identifies the element. Here, 11 is sodium's atomic number. So let's just look at a few questions and answer them. This first question says, how many protons are in aluminum? So if you would look at your periodic table and find aluminum, you would see that it has the atomic number 13. So that means it has 13 protons. Another question says, how many protons are in Al plus 3? Notice here we see a positive free charge, which means this is a cation. Remember, cations are positively charged. 
Now, this is sort of a trick question because the protons, remember, can never change. So the aluminum ion also has 13 protons. When you see a charge, that simply means it's gained or lost electrons. Only the electrons would have changed. In this case, this would have lost three electrons because it has a positive three charge. Another question says, what element has 53 protons? Well, the element with 53 protons, you would want to find um, the element with that atomic number, and that's iodine. So hopefully, you are following along with that. There's another number called your mass number. Now, here that we're looking at this um, picture of sodiums from the periodic table, this is the average atomic mass. The atomic mass number typically is rounded to the nearest whole number when we're using it in our notation that we will be using later on. So we would round this one to 23 to the whole number. The atomic um, mass number is equal to the sum of the protons plus the neutrons. So both particles that are found in the nucleus added together, that's what the mass number represents. So if you want to find the number of neutrons in an atom, you have to take the mass number and subtract the atomic number from it. So in this case, if we were going to be using sodium, we would take his mass number, which we rounded to 23, and we would subtract from that 11, its atomic number. And so 23 minus 11 is going to give you 12 for your number of neutrons. Okay, that's our review of um, atoms and ions and using the periodic table.